This question is taken from our site statisticsmentor.com. Now suppose you're in my class, I asked you the question, have you in statistics seen this expression or this expression? Usually someone in the class is able to answer. He or she will say something like, oh isn't it in the formula for the variance? Uh, well very good. Uh, but it's actually for the part of the formula for the sample variance. Recall there's a difference between the sample variance and the population variance. And here, the formula. You may have seen this one or this one. They are equivalent. Now each has its merits. Now, this one on the left gives us an idea of how the variance is obtained you can see that it's obtained by looking at the differences between the observations to the mean. The closer those numbers are, the list of numbers are, the closer all those numbers will be to its mean and hence this figure will be small, hence small variance. However, it's quite hard uh, to calculate, well not hard but just tedious to calculate on a uh, using a calculator compared to this second expression. The second expression is much easier to calculate using a calculator uh, but doesn't give us the intuition of how the variance is obtained. So just to recap then here that both these expressions are the same. The only difference is in the numerator and if we are to compute the variance uh, it's better to use this one expression here because we can get it faster using a calculator. If we go back to the question, the question is this, asking us to show that the numerators are... Now this is one of the first proof type questions my students see and uh, they seem pretty terrified, some of them, by it. proof. So let's take it step by step. Now there's various ways to do a proof here. Uh, we could start with the left side expression and work towards the right. We could work with the right expression and move towards the left. Uh, here it seems more uh, natural to work with the left side. Now each step of our proofs we should be engineering it so that our left hand side expression becomes resembles more and more the right side. Now look at it first. On the right hand side we've got squared terms on the xi's and x bars. The square term here is on the outside of the brackets so a natural thing to do would be to expand the brackets. So here the first line of the proof I've just written down fully what it means to say xi minus x bar all squared. Now we will multiply through. So it'll be this times this, this times this, this times this and this times so multiplying out we have this second line. Recall that two minuses make a plus. So already it's beginning to look like the right hand side expression. Next take the summation sign through the brackets like so. Notice now that this first term matches the first term in the answer so we don't touch it. So now to finish off this question here, we've got to show that this third uh, third and second term together matches this term here. Now this term here involves x bars, it doesn't involve x i's. The third term involves x bars squares, that's good. Uh, the second term doesn't, so we have to kind of think how can we make that into an x bar squared. But before we do that let's take this 2x bar which does not depend on i, the rule is that since it doesn't depend on the counter i uh, we can take it out of the summation sign because it's a common factor. Likewise the rule on summation here is that sum of a constant will be n lots of that constant since here we're summing from i's 1 to n. So this is what we have so far. It's at this stage my students start to run out of ideas now. Yes, question is how do I convert this sum of xi in terms of x bar? 
we want to convert this whole second term so it's expressed in terms of x bar squared. And you actually have the answer in your head because you know that x bar, the sample mean, is equal to sum of xi over n. So what does that mean about sum of xi in terms of x bar? That's right, it is n times x bar. So substituting this for sum of xi, we now get the second term is minus 2nx bar squared and it's easy just to complete the final line like so and we are done. Now when we're done with a proof we should end it properly so you'll have seen in textbooks or your school teacher have told you uh, put something by like QED or a symbol like a box or closed box or blocked box something to show that you're finished. For more materials visit us at statisticsmentor.com if you'd like to discuss this problem or look at similar problems uh, click on the link in the description box in the YouTube page below.